Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have uh, a lot to talk about here in regards to Tears of the Kingdom. I'm a little bit surprised at what we're talking about today and the data we have available because, yeah, this is another sales video on Tears of the Kingdom, but this isn't about it topping the charts, say, in like Taiwan or the UK or Japan. Yeah, we all know that it keeps topping the charts. Rather, today's video deals with an update to the lifetime to date sales. So the total sales of Tears of the Kingdom up to basically today or pretty close to today. And I am, you know, I, I can give you a little tease. We're damn close to 20 million of them sold. We're not there yet, but it's really close. I'm going to give you some of the more exact details here. In a moment, first, I just want to remind you guys that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers, and I would just appreciate if you would go ahead and add yourself to that army as, you know what, we really want to get to 150K this year, and this is a dream of mine I'm chasing on YouTube to be a full-time YouTuber and support my family doing something I love, and every time you guys subscribe to the video, every like you drop, every just view you give to my videos helps me on that journey so thank you so much and let's dive into this so we're getting this news from paul gale who already came on one of our live streams last week and told me that nintendo switch has sold to 15 percent of the switch's install base of 125 million uh but we want to get to some numbers he posted publicly here because obviously that was during a live stream here we got some exact stuff here so first off he notes that 16.8 percent of the nintendo switch install base 20.61 million out of 100 22.55 million bought Pokemon Scarlet and Violet during its 44 day holiday quarter. 10 million alone in the first three days. Tears of the Kingdom also did 10 million in the first three days. This was announced by Nintendo, but it has 50 days in its quarter because this quarter ended, uh, the quarter of its first availability ended on June 30th. And that was on an install base that began April 1st at 125.62 million and only went up from there over the next three months. Nintendo Switch was the number one best-selling console worldwide in April and May, plus having its best June ever in Japan, and we don't know U.S. numbers yet. Nintendo Switch through June 30th is around 130 million-ish, which that seems pretty reasonable, and Zelda has been a sales juggernaut. In the late hours of the day on August 2nd in the United States, Nintendo will show how many copies uh, of Zelda sold. Now remember, this is when Nintendo gives their official update and he notes it's 15% or roughly 18 million plus sell through of June 30th where Nintendo Switch as of at that date and gives us updates on plenty of other games prepare to be impressed now I told you I'd give you more exact data at 18 million is close but when you actually do 15% of 125 million this isn't even counting the, the, the other half million in sales just 125 million you take 15% of that it puts it around 18,750,000. Then if you consider it's 15% of the install base, including the new sales of Switches, you're probably looking closer to 19 million plus in sales. That is utterly incredible. Like, utterly incredible. It's going to hit. Like, I'm just going to put this other right now. Tears of the Kingdom is going to be at 20 million in sales before the holidays. It's probably going to sell an extra 4 or 5 million over the holidays. It has a shot. An outside shot. That by the time we get to May of next year, remember, a full 12 calendar months, by the time we get to May of next year, it might have sold 30 million plus. It might have even outsold Breath of the Wild. That would be just insane. Absolutely insane if Tears of the Kingdom pulls that off. What this is, obviously, is the fastest selling Zelda game of all time. It took Breath of the Wild years to hit 20 million. The fact that this is going to do it probably in less than six months is just astounding. And again, it just goes to show that the word of mouth is really carrying Tears of the Kingdom, right? Word of mouth on how incredible this game is. Uh, the high shot that it's going to be game of the year. So the high review scores, the massive install base, and really... The, the, the idea is the fervor around Tears of the Kingdom hasn't slowed down. I think that's my biggest takeaway in general is we are in the seventh year of Switch and we've never seen a seventh year of a Nintendo platform, which by the way, they've had other platforms hit in the seven year mark. We haven't seen this much excitement around software releasing on the platform, let alone that hardware sales are obviously doing numbers Nintendo's never seen in year seven. It's, it's just interesting to me watching that 
as long as Nintendo delivers amazing games, like look, Tears of the Kingdom is not a game that's available in 1080p, let alone 4K, right? It tops out at 900p. It's not a game that even is a locked 30 FPS, let alone aiming for 60 FPS plus. I know a lot of you guys might be emulated on PC and doing whatever you do, but the intended way and the only official release doesn't do any of that. And yet, it is right now the fastest selling video game in the United States. It is the fastest selling game worldwide this year. It's massively outpaced and already outsold Hogwarts Legacy. And obviously Final Fantasy can't keep up. And here's the thing. We talk about like, oh, Final Fantasy can't keep up. There's a much smaller install base on PlayStation. Absolutely. And I think it's still sold, I think, to like 10% of the PlayStation 5 install or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers uh, that, that are floating out there for Final Fantasy 16, which is still not a bad number, but it, it just shows that the fervor around Zelda is... Uh, look, I here, here's here's why my mind is so blown. Some of you guys might not be blown out by this at all. You might just be like, I expected this. This isn't that big of a deal. I have been reporting on Zelda news since 1998. Yeah, back in the 90s, the late 90s, I was 12 years old when I spun out my first Zelda fan site at geocities.com uh, and started reporting on Zelda news. And I did that all the way until 2000 and gosh, was it 2017? Right up until Switch launched, uh, I, I was covering Zelda stuff. And the crazy thing through all of the sales and everything that I have covered with Zelda since 1998 the idea that a Zelda game could sell 10 million in three days when before Breath of the Wild, no Zelda game had ever sold 10 million. The fact that it could sell 20 million within, you know, three, four months. Dude. A Zelda is entering a territory I never dreamt possible. As someone who's been playing these games for 30 plus years, I never dreamt it was possible that Zelda could be this. These are the kind of numbers that you expect. Maybe Pokemon, maybe Mario, but even then for Pokemon and Mario, this is impressive. So I, look, this isn't going to outsell Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, right? But Zelda is, is at a level at Nintendo that very few of their IPs have really reached like, if you just think about this, just think about these sales numbers. Yeah, Mario Kart, obviously, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with its 60 million in sales has achieved a level that prior Nintendo games haven't besides Wii Sports, which was a packing game. So setting aside packing games like for a non-packing game, then again, Mario Kart, part of those sales were also packing games during holidays. So it's not even exclusively not a packing game. But what's really interesting is you think about the history of Nintendo and the number of games they've had so sell over 20 million, sell over 30 million. You know, you have Mar you know multiple Mario games up there, so Mario clearly is capable of that. You have multiple Pokemon games up there, although not really as many Pokemon games as you would think. And to get those sales required two Pokemon games, you know, in the same generation. So, like, it, it's not even a fair comparison compared to Mario. And outside of that, Smash Bros. Ultimate got up there, and no, no prior Smash game came close to what Ultimate did sales-wise. And I struggle to think of any other games that have this level of massive success from Nintendo. When did Zelda, I mean, we know when, Breath of the Wild, right? But when did Zelda become the level of sales of Mario? Of, a, of not just any Mario, like side-scrolling Mario games that sell 30 million. When did Zelda become that? Well, this generation. And, and, and to say I never expected Zelda to be at that level would be an under statement i mean these are the kind of sales numbers you expect from grand theft auto these are the sort of sales numbers you expect from call of duty and the big thing with those games is they're multi-platform so it's playstation xbox pc sometimes even mobile phones occasionally nintendo platforms like we're talking about the best of the best selling games in the world in this space i'm not counting mobile obviously pokemon go did incredible things that is just unfathomable to me that Zelda is at that elite level now. And what's really nice for Nintendo having another IP enter that elite level like a Pokemon and, I mean, Animal Crossing. Obviously, Animal Crossing New Horizons was up there too because that pulled it off. So now if you've got Animal Crossing up there, you've got Mario up there, you've got Zelda up there, maybe even Smash Bros up there. When you got 
like four or five IPs that can that have sales potential of twenty million plus, you have created a not you've created a, a, a realm where you no longer need other games. Now I want third party games. I want our Doom Eternals. I want Call of Duties. I want Maddens and, and NBA Two K and and Civ and Diablo and look. I want all these games. Mortal Kombat One, right? We're, like we're getting Mortal Kombat One and Hogwarts Legacy later. Like I want those games. But Nintendo has created a world where they have so many high demand franchises with so much consumer interest, they don't need anybody else. And while we can argue Nintendo hasn't needed anybody else for a long time, it's real now, more than ever. And Zelda is now one of those reasons. Zelda's always been a big deal to Zelda fans. Hasn't always necessarily been a big deal for Nintendo in determining success of platforms. Now it is. It is a system seller extraordinaire. It is a mover like Pokemon. It is a mover like Animal Crossing, which just now became a mover this generation as well. And it is a mover like Mario. <sighs> man, go go Nintendo, man. This is this is this is just I want to take a moment and just recognize how incredible this is that this happened. A decade ago, no Zelda fan would have told you this was possible. None of us. None of us thought. We thought maybe maybe they could make an open world Zelda game or something that could cross 10 million. No one was thinking back to back 20 plus million selling Zelda. Like it just Damn. Zelda's now a mega franchise. It's now a mega, it's not just one of the most respected, highly reviewed, uh, highly regarded IPs out there with its core audience of four to eight million. It is now a mega IP. And that's, that's incredible. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on these sales figures down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.